The soil you see here is not ordinary soil. The top of the earth is Crow Indian. It's the dust of the bones and the blood of our ancestors. To get to the real earth, you have to go through the upper portion. The upper portion is Crow. And that was said by Curly. The cry for vengeance for the decisive defeat of the U.S. cavalry was spread. It is a stunning if temporary victory for the native people. Of the leaders in battle that day at the Little Bighorn, Crazy Horse will become the stuff of legend. Even though trapped and dead at 35, his image blasted in rock in the sacred stolen Black Hills. Not far from the place of presidents at Mount Rushmore. Sitting Bull will seek temporary refuge in Canada, the land of the grandmother, Queen Victoria, before surrendering in the United States. Custer will become the controversial subject of investigations, books, films, and artists like Gerald McMaster. It was reported following the Little Bighorn that Custer's hat size was unusually large. Custer, I think, represented a number of things in uh, two native peoples about Western society, ego. Um, it also represented the police state. It represented in movies, as I mentioned, uh, uh, when Indians get unruly, you always have the cavalry coming to the rescue to save the day. It also signified this uh, cowboy and Indian image it was uh, us against them. Because the uh, government's policy in the States, which was not on like what it was the case here in Canada, they wanted, they wanted to move the Indians onto the reservation so that they would be out of the way, which would give freedom to the Europeans, to the government to expand westward. On only two occasions were there major fights between the whites and the Indians in Canada, in Manitoba during 1869 and in western Saskatchewan during 1885. And I remember in school studying Leo, Louis Riel back in high school, and I think we had about a paragraph and a half on the man. Uh, and then he was told to us as being a rebel and, uh, and uh, a madman. And uh, that unfortunately isn't true, and I knew at that time it wasn't true. Each time the battle was led by the Métis Louis Riel. He was only 41 when he died on the gallows of Regina with the Lord's Prayer on his lips. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que votre nom soit sanctifié, que votre règne arrive, que votre volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Just after Christmas in the year 1890, an era ended here at Wounded Knee in South Dakota, and stark grave markers under a lonely flag of truce are silent reminders of a terrible battle recalled by Dwayne Brewer. 100 years ago, uh, Chief Bigfoot and his band of followers were coming to the Pine Ridge Agency. They were intercepted by the 7th Cavalry, uh, escorted to this site, of course, Bigfoot was coming in with a f under the flag of surrender, and uh, they were asked to give up their weapons. Many of them did, but a shot was fired, and uh, the cavalry began to open up on on Big Bigfoot and his followers. Bigfoot was was killed. Uh, of course, Bigfoot was very sick and had pneumonia, and uh, was you know didn't resist at all, but he was still, uh, he was still killed. Uh, troops uh, opened up on, on the people, and, and uh, the Indians, of course, uh, his followers began to, to have hand-to-hand -hand battles with uh, some of the, the troops. And, uh, of course, they had the Hotch Hotchkissing guns up on top of the hill up here, and they began to uh, open up on the people. 
a lot of the the uh, Bigfoot's people ran down into a ravine over here. But many of them didn't get that far. Uh, they were uh, shot by the, the, the Hotchkiss and guns. Uh, there are um, stories out that the 7th Cavalry was getting revenge for the Custer battle. We know it today as a massacre. Were soldiers ever punished for committing this crime? Never punished. They were awarded medals uh, for, for what they'd done here. You know, massacred 187 people. It's 100 years ago. Now, this was, I think, the last Indian War? The last Indian War. A world ended that day at Wounded Knee. They don't know what they've taken. Well, his dignity is gone. The bones, they are scattered. But his spirit, it lingers on. There was no hope on earth, and God seemed to have forgotten us. Some said they saw the Son of God. Others did not see him. If he had come, he would do some great things as he had done before. We doubted it because we had seen neither him nor his works. The people did not know. They did not care. They snatched at the hope. They screamed like crazy men to him for mercy. They caught at the promise they heard he had made. The white men were frightened and called for soldiers. We had begged for life, and the white men thought we wanted theirs. We heard that soldiers were coming. We did not fear. We hoped that we could tell them our troubles and get help. A white man said the soldiers meant to kill us. We did not believe it, but some were frightened and ran away to the Badlands by Red Cloud. like to reflect on the words of Chief Joseph. I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are killed. The old men are all dead. It is the young men who say yes or no. He who led on the young men is dead. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My people, some of them, have run away to the hills and have no blankets, no food. No one knows where they are, perhaps freezing to death. I want to have time to look for my children and see how many of them I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs. I am tired. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. I have heard talk and talk, but nothing is done Good words do not last long unless they amount to something. Words do not pay for my dead people. They do not pay for my country, now overrun by white men. Good words will not give my people good health and stop them from dying. Good words will not get my people a home where they can live in peace and take care of themselves. I am tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick when I remember all the good words and broken promises. You might as well expect the rivers to run backward as that any man who was born a free man should be content when he when penned up and denied liberty to go where he pleases. I have asked some of the great white chiefs where they get their authority 
to say to the Indian that he shall stay in one place while he sees white men going wherever they please. They cannot tell me. Let me be a free man, free to travel, free to stop, free to work, free to trade where I choose, free to choose my own teachers, free to follow the religion of my fathers, and I will obey every law or submit to the penalty. These are the words of Chief Joseph. When the eloquent orator Chief Joseph died in exile, the Indian agency physician reported the cause of death as a broken heart. The 20th century will introduce the cigar store Indian. Tricked, caged, confined, he will reluctantly pose as a relic of an imagined savage time. The chief keeper of the display Indian is an entrepreneur called Buffalo Bill. What is the significance of Buffalo Bill to the native person? Is he a symbol of a kind of a bizarre time? It was. As the title indicates, the Wild West, I think that the Indian saw the, the West as quite wild, like the West is captured by Western civilization, and whereas Western civilization saw <clears throat> the Indian as quite wild, and again, as indicated in the terminology, and he was wild, the wild savage, and so they each was looking at each other as quite wild. And um, in this particular one, I was looking at Buffalo Bill and in just that name Buffalo Bill who had co-opted this idea that he was in fact the, the person that represented uh, Hollywood at, at its earliest so that he would relate to his non-native audience the man and of course we're all quite I think we're all quite familiar with the Buffalo Bill and the Wild West shows and in them he would uh, he hired a lot of native peoples to work with him, primarily Sioux. And as I understand it, uh, the famous leader, shaman, and elder, Tatanka Eotanka, was also in the show. Tatanka Eotanka is Lakota for sitting bull. It sort of further put nails in the coffins of Indian culture by displaying native peoples this way. Packed in plastic, some symbols of native authority and faith become distorted and confused. The 20th century is for the North American Indian, a time when governments try to wash out Indianness and attempt to subvert the native faith, to eliminate his language and convince him that the European civilization is somehow superior. In Canada, he is called a ward of the crown. He is told all he has to do is reject his history and he will somehow be taken care of. It is a twisted truth and it finds its most offensive form in the residential school. Basil Johnson is a historian of his people. He wrote a book about his personal experience in residential schools, Indian School Days. The reason why I was removed from my family is that my mother and father were separated. And this gave the uh, clergy and the Indian Affairs branch 
an opportunity to remove me from home to this school so that eventually I would be so assimilated I would not go back. One of the factors, of course, that is forgotten in the whole business is the suffering, the anguish endured and inflicted upon women whose children were taken away from them. Must have been agony. My it mother been. used to, you know, she never said a great deal. She said, I cried. You know, how many nights did she cry? My grandmother. How many other women cried? And how many nights did they cry? To have an agency come along and say to them, we're taking two of your children or all of your children. And there's not a thing that those women could do. I think I started to suspect that something was wrong the very first day that I was there when I was... Uh, one of my clothing was taken away from me and I was issued a uniform consisting of a beige shirt and a uh, beige gabber, uh, corduroy trousers and boots and had my hair shorn. I began to feel maybe I was given away. Maybe I wasn't wanted. And that doubt was almost reinforced. At least something else was put on top of it. And that is the, uh, the teaching of the church you're, that you're a worthless person, that you're a sinner. You called yourself inmate 43. So <laughs> I was. That was my number. We all had numbers. So you really felt as if you were in jail, it sounds as if you're saying. Well, that's what it was. It was, it was a damn prison for doing nothing. Uh, and it was the, I, the general belief, not only with the Catholic Church, but also with the Anglican Church and with the Methodist Church and Presbyterian and a number of other churches, that punishment was good. For everybody, and there were, there were, there were things you know a lot worse than strappings or a blow on the head with a fist, a kick in the ass with a, bo a heavy boot, a a fist, be knocked down. Was there any sexual abuse? There was. There was. Hell, Mount Cash was you know twenty years behind time, and uh, a lot of that uh, occurred way back in the well as early as the 30s and the 20s. And this is why Native people hated those institutions so damn much. They never said anything about this because nobody was going to believe you. Myself, I got away you know, with a lot for, for a variety of reasons. But yes, I did see an awful lot of abuse, physical abuse. Of, oh, some kids just had it real bad. You know, girls, getting sh get, girls getting their heads shaved and stuff like that. Head shake for what purpose? For doing by minor, you know, relatively minor infractions. What was there sexual abuse too? Yes, there was. One thing that I should make very clear is that uh, sexual abuse is one part of uh, this whole abusive experience, and I experienced sexual abuse, physical abuse, uh, psychological abuse. Uh, and it went on throughout the entire uh, time I was in residential school.